Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Praise Podcast. My name is Eric Lyde, and it is so good to be joining you once again here today, coming to you from the new and improved Praise Podcast Studios. And of course, I am joined by the one and only, the co-host above any other co-host, the Brooke Paninski <laughs> is in the house. Um, you know, Brooke, mm-hmm. as I was doing that intro, I think that um, there are things that we all become known for mm-hmm. in a way, you know? <laughs> And uh, I think I have fallen into this uh, niche. Is it niche or niche? I don't know. We'll think about that. But niche, niche of um, I've kind of become this intro guy. Yeah. Because I now on uh, this past Tuesday did my fourth wedding in which, no, I did not sing at it. No, I did not officiate it. But I did the res- the bridal party reception mm-hmm. intros. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. And that's, that's that's like become my thing, I guess. Like All people right. know me for the intro guy. I'm the I'm the announcement intro guy. That's good. Yeah. So, anyways, as I was just doing that, I just it just came to my mind that mm. maybe that's what I am in life. You know, maybe I'm the intro guy. Yeah. So far. So far. So far, so good. So far. Anyways, welcome. It's good to have you. It's good to be here. Yeah. Brooke, what do we need to, you know what, what do we need to tell them right off the bat? What what should they, what should they do to get the most Mm. out of their praise podcast experience? I feel like that's a trick question. Ooh. Um, But in my opinion... You should probably like and subscribe and share and all the things. Yes. You should also comment, email in, um, interact with each other on um, our Instagram. Yes. Um, that's always really fun. Yeah. And speaking of that, yeah. uh, speaking of Instagram, mm-hmm. last episode we asked for some specific mm-hmm. feedback, mm-hmm. and some of you gave it, mm-hmm. and so. Um, I guess we'll need to work on that. So one thing that was cool um, that – well, there are two things that I highlighted in my brain for like, oh, that's really good. Um, One was that – like an opportunity for like the people who are listening to be community with one another, Mm -hmm. uh, which is incredible and a wonderful idea. And so then it's just like, okay, well, then like for right now, um, just like with where we are, just the opportunity to like – be in the comments, um, get each other's handles, you know, do all the things. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a way that the people who are all the, on the listening side of um, of this can just kind of get to know each other and have conversations or whatever. So just interacting with that profile would be great. And then hopefully as we grow and as interaction kind of just increases and authentically just happens, we um, can kind of move into – um, I don't know, maybe other platforms of means of conversation, which is really cool. Yeah. Anyways, um, and we had another um, suggestion as well um, that hopefully we'll be making it an intentional point to talk about. But um, just on our favorites page yeah. or like resources page, mm-hmm. we've got – podcast and books and items and all sorts of things um, on there. And it was kind of said to be like, I would love to hear why, you know, or like what about them um, made them your favorites or what about them, um, I guess, made you want to recommend them to all your listeners. And so, yeah, just giving some more background as to like maybe what it's about or how we came across it or how we were able to implement that material uh, or we found it beneficial for ourselves and why we then recommend it to you. So that was kind of cool. I think just kind of getting inside um, our brain even more was what was requested, which is surprising that people want to know more of our thoughts. But if that's only they amazing. knew what they were asking for. <laughs> just, it's so good. That's a good idea. So yeah, there's just yeah. a couple things like that. So thank you for your feedback in. Yeah. Um, I spent a lot of the day yesterday actually just kind of mapping out some social stuff. So yeah, hopefully we can figure out our social media game eventually sooner than one later. Day. But one, one day. day we will. It's just not in our nature, but we're willing to try. We're so trying. We're trying. Learning. Anyways. Trying. Growing. 
Yeah. All speaking these of growing, our playlist is just growing and growing and growing. We had, of course, so far six new songs so far within season yeah. four. But it there's like, I mean, you could push play on our Spotify playlist and never hear the same song twice for like a day. Yeah, that's wild. Isn't that nuts? It's really nuts. It's so crazy. Yeah. Anyways, but I think that's really also kind of awesome. So yeah. Should we make the list grow? Let's do even it. more. Let's let's give it two more. I want to go first today. I <laughs> do it. Go first. All right. So I'm going to attempt to do a song that isn't already on the list because I feel like maybe I've the last few times we go back maybe double it that, happens. But it, yeah. Um, so this one, um, this one is called "A Thousand Generations" by SEU Worship. And I don't really think it's all that new of a song. I think this song has been around for a bit now, but I mm. just have either connected with it for the first time or finally um, discovered it or remembered it, whatever. But man, it's just a good song. Like um, some of the some of the lyrics in the verse. Um, are just, yeah, like, uh, let's see here. What's that first verse? Uh, I left a piece of my heart at the cross, and you carried it with you to heaven above. All day and night, my soul eagerly waits to see heaven come and your kingdom invade. Mm -hmm. There wasn't space for my sin and my shame, but that didn't stop you from calling my name and waking me up from this heartbroken place with your songs of your freedom and notes of your grace. Mm -hmm. It's good. good. It is good. Mm -hmm. um, saying, come now, Lord Jesus, restore what you've made. Um, yeah, just just really good, good lyrically. Um, and it just builds into this, like, just massive. It's just big. Like, it's, I like big. Mm -hmm. and, you like and a moment. Full. I yeah. like a moment that, like. But you're a drummer. It is, yeah. There's That's why. There's that as well. Mm -hmm. And But, like, I just, I like a song that starts me. Mm -hmm. Like almost tells a story, mm -hmm. but then almost gets very anthemy and just huge at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's quite it's, it's quite the journey yeah. melodically. Yeah, because um, uh, so that was the other it's good. the other song that I think we've done already, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like uh, same SEU worship. Mm -hmm. What a God mm -hmm. is the same. Like again, lyrically, mm -hmm. uh, what was that one? What's the one lyric? Uh, that we were talking if about. If the uh, highest place, yeah. I, I think it's reach, is at your feet, then I've got it all or something like yeah. that. I'd have to look to make sure word for word. Yeah. But it's really good. Yeah. But that mm -hmm. song too. I mean, mm -hmm. the live version of that song, holy smokes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you could listen to that song. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you could be in that room live and not just be like on your face at the, by the end of yeah, it. I mean, that really was just good. like, that was a trip. In my car is where I, I was mm -hmm. driving. So at this wedding, I had to be at the rehearsal dinner and I was just in the car by myself. And was driving. It was in the middle of nowhere, just like in this place. Cool place, but just middle of nowhere. And so I was driving through all these country roads at night, and those two songs came on, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, had so a mo funny. I had a moment in the middle of nowhere, Alto Pass, on uh, Monday <laughs> night, just me. It was 9 o'clock at night. I'm just driving. It's dark, and I'm like, good night. I about had to pull over. That's really um, funny. Good. But yeah, so those two songs so for sure. Songs. But but A Thousand Generations, mm -hmm. SEU Worship, you should listen to that song for sure. And yeah. it will probably automatically roll right into What a God. And you should just let it do its thing there because. <laughs> yeah, that's a good song. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So mine um, for this episode is Everything That Has Breath. And it's a Jesus Culture song um, with Brian and Katie Torwall. And again, I. Uh, it, it's just one of those songs also that takes you on a journey, um, and I love it. I love it comes out, and it says, We lift our hands to the heavens, and we are here for you. We reach out, or we reach for the hem of your garment. We know what it can do. Um, we refuse to go through the motions when the king is in the room. We hear the sound of our devotion. Let it build a throne for you. Um, then it says, Let everything that has breath praise, praise. Um, it, yeah, it's just really good. But I'm yeah. all about. Um, is that new? Mm, 
it's new-ish, yeah. Okay, so then it goes on to verse 2, and it says, to, uh, it says, We've come to pour out oil to wash our Savior's feet. Every drop from every bottle can't compare to your glory. We refuse to bring an offering that doesn't cost us anything because you're worth everything. Let everything that has breath praise. Mm. Um, so That's good. So it's so good, and of course... You know, the storytelling you brought up, I think of yeah. it being just an ode to some of the stories that um, are such a posture of worship and yeah. faith and the miraculous in the Bible that mm-hmm. we do tend to, to to read and to go to and to lean on um, when sharing certain things. Um, and I, I like the ode to both of those, just the, the hem of his garment, that whole thing. And then, yeah. of course, the oil, the offering. And, um, and as just a worshiper, you know, Offering means so much, and you say and you think about the word cost or costly quite often because that is so predominant in our thoughts Mm -hmm. and in in the forefront of our mind. Um, And I think it's also the great accountability that comes with the position, too, of just like... um, recognizing the the spot you're in in your flesh when you show up and trusting that, you know, the Lord's going to have to work in and through your own flesh before he, almost before he positions you to be able to kind of be used in a way that's in front of many. And again, I'm no Bible scholar, but I do think that it's like, there's an inward work that he does with me. I will feel it before I feel like I can really actually step into, um, like my almost like my spirit self, like it, there's just a difference. Like I feel yeah. the difference when I'm, ha- I I make myself step in, and then it takes a little bit of time, and then the Lord just, I mean, just as, in His presence, um, He'll come in and He'll do a quick work, and He shifts my perspective, and He takes off the weight, and He gives me the energy that I need, and then you know you just start hearing His voice, and you just it's just this whole inner. Uh, dialogue that is happening yeah. in worship with like me and him yeah. and granted people are watching it not knowing it's taking yeah. place but then it's like once the lord gets me in check i i do feel like what flows out of that then is different because it is from him so then i'm almost just a, a positioned ves- vessel in the way that i need to be for the way that he needs to move through me um, when you're leading a congregation of people and so um a song like that is very powerful to me, and especially when it's talking about, you know, just the cost of your offering, and um, then the call to praise is huge, and let mm-hmm. everything that has breath praise, and that's you and me, that's, you know, yeah. and, and it's the group of people we lead, or every weekend, it's it's every it's every person in the body of Christ, and so, yeah, anyways, but no, really I love, good. I love that song, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. that's really good. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, I don't know, we've talked about it probably a million times on here as well, but there really is just, I think we we take for granted or we just don't think about uh, how important like the preparation part is before Mm -hmm. those kind of things, Mm -hmm. you know, and um, the intentional, the intentionality behind making the choice, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. because it is really hard. Like it's hard to... You know, there's always so much, or at mm-hmm. least in my brain, there's always so much swirling mm-hmm. around, mm-hmm. you know, and so many distractions or so many um, insecurities or things that are like, you know, swirl, just things that, mm-hmm. you know, that are distracting. And um, yeah, that I, I think we all deal with that, whether we're, mm-hmm. you know, on the stage or, or not. Yeah, it's, like a, you're, it's, it's just a human yeah, thing. It's, it's our flesh. It's a human flesh. thing. And so yeah, yeah. Um, I think we, like just the preparation of going into mm-hmm. those moments mm-hmm. and, and when you know that you're going to be stepping into something, the importance behind um, being ready to pay the cost because it is, yeah. whether whether you got to, you know, no matter what you're doing, um, to really do it is is a sacrifice. And mm-hmm. so... Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good stuff. Very good. Very good. Good deal. So let's, let's chat about Mm. and maybe attempt. I don't honestly know that I can, I don't know how much words that I can put behind some things yet. How many? Like legitimate, how many? (laughs) 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 Yeah. You know, how that's. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. I'm still learning. 
It's okay. At least it wasn't a cuss it's, word this it's, time. Yeah, it's progress. <laughs> Praise God. Um, no, You're yeah, fighting, I'm, but, with you, yeah I'm with you. But, I'm with so, you. I'm with you. So here's mm-hmm. here's what I think we're going to like. Mm-hmm. First off, if you don't know, God is just so cool. Mm-hmm. And God is just incredibly good. And he is incredibly faithful. And he, um, for whatever reason... He, we are in a a time, a season right now, where in so many different ways, both big and small, we are getting to witness like real miracles, yeah, real life change, yeah, just real moves of mm. God, like legitimate, real, um, yeah. wild moves of God. Mm-hmm. And it is just like, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. It's overwhelming. And that's Mm -hmm. why I just don't know. Like we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it, but I just don't eat. I literally don't. Like I, I, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to be like over dramatic. I just literally don't know. Yeah. um, Yeah. Okay. So I don't, yeah. Yeah. So you. let's just talk about this. So in the last couple of weeks, and this is just as believers. So I mean, like, I know that it's very easy for like Eric and I to come and talk about like where we're at. Well, cause that's what we do, you know? Mm-hmm. And sometimes it can maybe not be as relatable because positions and perspectives or whatever, but this is something so important because it just has everything to do with being a part of the body of Christ. And the last couple of weeks, uh, what's today's date? November 8th? It's a Friday. Friday, November 8th. 2024. 2024. We just had the presidential election. Um, Survived. And it's, the you know. Is still standing. It, it's just, I mean, and I, I know everyone, it makes me kind of emotional. I know so many people feel so many different ways about um, the election and it's this isn't a conversation about the election, but it is a conversation about um, a move of God and in our country, and even from from that perspective, but also um, within um, God's people. And I don't think that they are unrelated, although I'm not equipped or smart enough to talk about it. <laughs> like I don't get too involved and it's not because I don't want to be, but truly it's just very intimidating to me. Um, and it's very hard because politics bring, it can bring out a very, um, passionate side of people. And then that's not always godly. And so then, you know, you don't want to be identified as a certain party, but then like, if you're not, then like people have something to say about it because whether you do or whether you don't, people can take on all these assumptions about you and what you believe in, what you are for and what you are about or what you are against. And, and so why am I talking about the politics, the election, all of that? Because I believe there's a tension point in a move of God that's happening all at once um, with his people and his church. And they all somehow really are um, cohesive with one another. And so Christians right now, we've, we're at this tension point. And um, in your own churches and your own families, um, also just as a country, you can feel it and you can see it. There's a great divide. There's a great need for God. There's a great lacking of conversation um, about all of it, you know? And and I think that right now where we're coming from is, you know, as leaders, you're like, how do you lead in such a tender moment of his church and of a move of God? You don't want to misstep and you don't want to a miss steward and you know you don't want to cause more confusion you don't want to cause more chaos so then you're you're walking in in this fine line of god what do i say what do i not say what does not saying say you know and it just can be very complicated as leaders but it's very complicated as christians you know and so what what is brooke getting at here what is the point the point being being on the side of this genuine move of God that is so vast and, and having this perspective of seeing it, you know, in a, in a 
political state and then also seeing it in, in a personal state. You're, you know, we're in our hometown, we're in our home church, and you just see the great division that politics has even brought within a church. Not, I'm not talking about like, you know, if there's anything going on in our church that, da, da, da. I don't mean that, but it's like, we would be foolish to think there weren't, you know, if right now, you know, we had our congregation of people and we said who voted blue and who voted red, you know, you would have a great division. You have neighbors, you drive down the street and you have, you know, neighbors living across the road from each other, one with one sign and one with the other for mm-hmm. the political candidate. Like division is just everywhere in the church. Um, because it's ev- it just it's everywhere, and the enemy moves. Uh, he does a lot of damage. Um, he 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 does a lot of damage in in seasons like that, and in, in in relationships like that. Anyways, what we've been able to see right now in our home church is in the midst of all this division that is maybe we're not talking about it and maybe it's not like a pressing thing but you do know that you have x amount of people in a room all in which who feel a certain way that they do about you know just the ins and outs of the election that just happened um but yet so many of us in the same room are witnessing baptisms and salvations and lives truly being changed. Um, and, and I don't mean that lightly. I'm, I don't mean just like, oh, someone was a believer and or not a believer and like now they are. That's huge. I mean, of course that's huge. But I'm talking about when now you have people, and I know he won't mind me talking about this, but you know, we have a very dear friend and, and it's just like you hear his testimony and his testimony is, is one of the many tension points right now in our society and our culture within this election, within the church, the capital C church. And yet you see a move of God in real time transform and change in on an authentic, beautiful way that only he can do. And, and then we get back to this point and we're just like, okay, God, like you really are real. You really do position and posture us in a way that's different than what culture says. You do position and posture us more than just red and blue. You really do position and posture us more than political things will say. Um, and again, these are people in the church, right? I'm talking about believers. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just rambling at this point, but... What I'm saying is the weight of when God really moves and the fact that he really is real and the fact that there is now a call for Christians everywhere to be so aware and yet so and the call to be so confident in who he is and also like his standards and his precedents. You know, it's we the temptation right now in in the church as Christians is um, is to maybe not say much. Um, to be careful with how we walk, to not offend. And of course, we don't want to offend. But Jesus is such a beautiful illustration of how you can teach and how you can love righteously, you know, Um, and how when you do that and you're praying for a move of God and you trust him with it, how he really can handle um, these great tension points that are weighing so deeply on um, people in our nation right now. And, um, and yet even within the capital C church, there's again, the great division. And you're like, people will be like, well, how can Christians vote red? And then the other side, well, how could Christians vote blue? Like you hear it all the time. And I really do feel like there's a call, you know, the Lord is, is calling us out of a color and into his gospel. And he's saying like, this is how you are to live. And so there is a great accountability as a Christian and as a believer to live that way and to believe that that these that the way he can restore and redeem people from bondage um, in real time still happens and mm-hmm. makes an eternal difference. So I think it is hard to art- articulate in this podcast episode. It might, it might feel a little strange. I don't know. But I think that's where we're at in our thoughts right now in ministry. And as believers, it's just the call now forward of if you really say you want to move of God and if we really 
recognize these tension points and have compassion about these tension points and approach these tension points beyond just our political party. Like we really are going to see lives changed. You know, we really are going to see heaven come to earth. And when you have supernatural encounters like that, it does leave you in moments like this as leaders, as people, as Christians, as just like speechless. They, they say, Brooke, you just talked for 20 minutes. It didn't leave you speechless. <laughs> but it does, leave, it does leave you in a spot where you're like, I don't even know how to articulate yeah. this correctly or in a way that translates well or productively. Yeah. So I don't know if anything I'm saying does, but I, I, I just, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Those are my, those are my, my thoughts from the well, last few weeks. And of leading. Yeah, and talking talking about a little bit what what you were mentioning there, you know, I think it it popped in my mind, you know, really the concept of even when Jesus came yeah. and was here, you know, there was such an expectation by so many people of you know, really on a political side of like, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to be this type, you know, he's he's come to do this type of ruling or he's come to take over this or yeah. to do that. And I think uh, you know, obviously, you know, he said it multiple times in the Bible, like, you know, he didn't come to be a human king, you know, mm-hmm. as far as like, as we see them, you know, and so that's, that was not the purpose. It was such a larger, like, we were thinking so small, you know, yeah. like at, everybody at that time was limiting him to, you know, like just rule on this earth of just as a as a physical king. Well, and you know? it made the most sense yeah, to them yeah, and, and what, that's they, what, yeah. what they knew in their culture yeah. too. And I think yeah. even today mm-hmm. we, we are still, thing. we're still doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like uh, there's so many people that are putting, you know, their, their, I mean, let's just call it what it is, their faith in, mm-hmm. you know, a political party mm-hmm. to come in and do, you know, to carry these things. And I think what we've seen on so many different levels recently is God coming in and reminding us of like, guys, that's not why, like, I didn't send my Holy Spirit to, mm-hmm. you know, to, to walk, like, it's so much bigger than that. Yeah. And it's so much, um, you know, all these tension points that mm-hmm. you're talking about, they mm-hmm. are real mm-hmm. tension points. There mm-hmm. were tension points when Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, there were cultural mm-hmm. tension points. Mm-hmm. That hasn't changed. They're very much real. They very much are things that we have to work through, Mm -hmm. you know? But I think at the end of the day, God is giving us real reminders of like, yes, those are earthly things that we're going to have to figure out. Mm -hmm. But I'm so much bigger than all of that. Yeah. And these tension points are, are maybe tension points, but let's not forget that at the end of the day, I'm still God. Yeah. And like... I'm still after my people Mm -hmm. and I'm still after my children, Mm -hmm. whether they're red or blue. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and, and he, and we've just, we've seen that and we've seen how, um, like you mentioned to literally witness the tension points of that, that has been. So, you know, one of those that has Mm -hmm. been so prevalent in Mm -hmm. our society and to see God just step in and say, let me show you, mm-hmm. <laughs> let mm-hmm. me, let me show you how this, mm-hmm. like, it's not this or that it's show them me, mm-hmm. give me space, mm-hmm. give me permission to come in mm-hmm. and to work. And I will, I will set it right. Mm-hmm. If you just <laughs> get out of the way, yeah. really in yeah. a lot of ways. Wow. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, There's been, it's just, it's heavy almost, you know? Well, it's the it's, weight of glory. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, I mean, it really yeah. is just this like reverence of like, of, of just like who he is and what he's actually doing. And when it becomes real to you, like, yeah, you just approach it in a different way. Like it feels weighty and heavy, but not in a bad way, no, but in no, a reverent way. Yeah. And it, it really is just like you, you just like, you don't even know how to handle it because you don't want to mishandle it because yeah. you're just, you recognize like, just like. I don't know, like how good it is. And that was, I mean, (laughs) you know, one of the things, so this, what was it, Sunday? So this past Sunday we had an event that we do um, 
called Baptisms and Bonfires. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a three week um, series our church does, mm-hmm. um, really teaching, um, really just fundamentals, basics, biblical yeah. basics of what baptism is, walking through that and, you know, picking out all the different questions of, you know, sprinkling and baptism by immersion or not by immersion or, you know, re- re-baptism, just all the mm-hmm. things that, you know, the, do I even need to do it? You know, all, all of those questions and talking points that can come around it. So one, if you have often wondered about that, I would encourage you, if you go to centralnow.com, um, you can watch all three weeks of that where John and um, James uh, teach on mm-hmm. um, baptism from a um, just a really good biblical, mm-hmm. basic, fundamental approach yeah. to what it is, why it's important, and why you should do it mm-hmm. if you have it. And so if, if, if that's something that you've ever wondered about or thought, I would encourage you to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, so at the end of that then um, – well, I guess for the we've always done kind of an outdoor baptism service. For the last couple of years, it's kind of morphed into this really cool kind of. Well, it was fall. in the summertime. Yeah, we used to do this in the summertime, yeah. and it was just so, so dang hot. hot. <laughs> it was so miserable. Like we'd be out there on this parking lot; it'd be a hundred degrees. Mm-hmm. We're up there leading. I mean, like just we're pouring sweat. Yeah, everybody wants to get baptized solely to get into the pool <laughs> so they can cool off. Like it's just it was just <sighs> such a it, yeah. It but wasn't, last year. Yeah. We change it to the fall. Yeah. So then we were like, please, can we stop sweating while we do this? <laughs> like, let's freeze instead. And so yeah. we did that. And then we moved it to the fall. And then, of course, fall. Um, I was actually trying to remember. And I think because somebody asked, like, what? And I was like, I don't even know. But I think what happened was we were going to do a first Thursday outside, like bonfire style. We wanted to do a first Thursday like kind of that vibe. Let's have bonfires. Let's do some worship outside and just kind of have that vibe. And then um, when we started talking that through with John and then James was like, well, hey, our group celebration is ending. Maybe we could tie it to that. And then we were like, well, hey, what if we just included baptisms in this as well? And then next thing you know, baptisms and bonfires was was born. (laughs) And so uh, we did it last year and then we, we did it again this year. And it just... It was so good. I think my two, I mean, two of my favorite events... I keep knocking my I, microphone. I've hit I'm mine multiple so times as well. It just sorry. is what it is. It is what it is. Um, but like, especially it's prom. I love that event. Mm-hmm. That's so much fun. And then this is without it. I mean, just. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, it's, it's just yeah. such. I mean, it was just really cool. And then this was our first year we got to do it at our Carbondale campus as well. So anyways, long story short, we saw um, between Carbondale and Mount Vernon, we saw 69 people. Come to find out. Come we to find thought out. It was we 70. thought it was 70. We were told 70. We were told 70. And we then were one, off by one. Lord, forgive us. Well, um, and it wasn't even us who was off by one. Well, that's true, but it just, it happens. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, but that, yeah, that, it it, was, there was about 70 people. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. like, obviously, I mean, that's just an emotional thing in general, you mm-hmm. know, to sit there and you, um, gosh, when especially, you know, you, you just, you know some of the stories. Mm-hmm. You know the background. You know yeah. what led those people to that spot. Um, and you had gosh, family members, just, yeah, family like members, whole families getting baptized yeah. together. Yeah, you know, you see, yeah. uh, you know, we got to baptize my daughter Blakely. Yeah. Um, you know, and you see parents baptizing kids. You see husbands and wives getting baptized mm-hmm. together. I mean, it just, it, you know, you see, um, you know. Men- influential people and mentors and other people's lives that mm-hmm. you know it's just it's just That's a awesome. it's just a powerful um mm-hmm. it it's just it's emotional it's a powerful thing to just sit and watch you know story after mm-hmm. story after story get in the tub and you know declare their faith mm-hmm. and get baptized and then there are literally hundreds of people their standing lives. out there yeah. just celebrating you mm-hmm. know as and uh it's just so cool, and um, I'm even getting. Oh look, I'm that's getting, good. I'm getting watery. Good for you. Um, it is so cool. But uh, yeah, and so and then like I said, we got to do that. They had 17 in Carbondale, and uh, but yeah, I don't even that's remember so where I was going with all this. But it, it that's one of the things we're referencing is mm-hmm. when we talk about the move of what God. we've seen and what um, it's just been. It's been wild, and mm-hmm. it just in general like. I don't, and this is, it's crazy to think about, and this is not like a, this is not a bragging thing, 
or anything. This is just like, again, telling you what God is doing in a church in Mount Vernon and Illinois and Carbondale, Illinois. But I cannot remember the last weekend that we didn't have a baptism, Mm -hmm. that we did not celebrate at least one baptism Mm -hmm. in a service. And like, I just, I think about like how, like we don't, I think we've even gotten so like, it's just so, we're so used to it. Mm -hmm. We're like, we don't even ask, are there any baptisms anymore? We ask how many and what service. And And, 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 I mean, truly you have to think like how many, you know, there, even for our church, like, that wasn't like no. to have a baptism was rare, but it was also like a lot of children who would be baptized. Yeah. And and now it's like you have children being baptized, but you've got like people from so many different walks of life and so many different stages and ages represented in the baptistry um, and, and genders alike. Like just, you know, you got old ladies getting baptized yeah. and old men getting baptized and you've got, you know, like young married couple with, you know, a few kids and you've got, you know, just anything in between. And it's just, yeah, it's super powerful. But like we weren't old, we didn't always have baptisms every weekend, no. you know, and there are churches who are like, you know, who, who can relate to that, you know, like we, it's not something we have every weekend. And, you know, like right now we really do have, um, we have, we have baptisms nearly every single weekend. And then to have, you know, almost 70 in just an event that we had, you know, I mean, I think that's also wild. Like, it's just, it's just cool. So anyways, um, yeah, and then you know, so you get to see, you get to see that, and mm-hmm. you get to be a part of that, and that's, um, you know, it's just it's that was powerful, mm-hmm. um, and again, you know the the, I just wish, <laughs> I wish we could just tell like every story, you know, because mm-hmm. there are you know not I mean, you know some of them are first time or there was not some, mm-hmm. you know, crazy life event that that got them to that point, mm-hmm. but then there's so many that, that are, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like, mm-hmm. gosh, if only people could just yeah. like, you know, and, and I, yeah. Um, and I'm sure someday maybe there will be, and be a time for that. But, um, and then just even in, I mean, gosh, just even last night, like glad we had first, oh. we had our first, we had first Thursday last prayer night, experience um, which a weeks yeah, ago. prayer. I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's just not enough. I mean, it's just, uh-huh. and it's so like, it's reassuring for me. And I'm sure you feel the same way mm-hmm. of like, it's just, it, it's so reassuring that it's, it's God stuff yeah. because it's just, there's just no way it could come from us. Yeah. And there's no way that, you know, we aren't good enough to even manufacture these things like mm-hmm. that. We're just, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it is just, it is only, it is only God. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean the, the prayer experience. Um, so our, our, our small groups, they, um, ended. And, uh, one of the things that they ended with was like a 24 hour fast. And then, um, to come in and do this prayer experience, which, um, this year was a little different than how they had done it in the past. And, um, Brooke led the groups through, through that. And really it was just simply really a time of like, Brooke gave some testimony on here's the, here's the why Mm -hmm. you should just step into this. And here's the why, and here's the what of we're going to do now. And it was basically like, we're just going to pray for each other and we're going to take as much time as we need for literally every person in your group to just be prayed for, be prayed over, Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they want be anointed with oil. Um, Mm -hmm. and it was, I mean, it's the first session started at four and I think maybe the last group ended at eight third, eight 30 ish. Um, and there was a point to where, at one point we're just sitting at the top of the room Mm -hmm. just watching it all. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it was just, you know, you hear the laughs and you hear the tears and you hear, um, you know, there was just real joy. There was real 
encounter. There was yeah. real, um, you could feel real weight being lifted off people. Um, and, uh, it, you know, we were talking like, and I'll even just ask it like, when is the last time that you had somebody mm-hmm. lay hands on you, mm-hmm. anoint you with oil mm-hmm. or, you know, but like legitimately just the last time that somebody didn't text you, say praying for you, but legitimately mm-hmm. was like with you mm-hmm. praying for you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were talking like there's probably so many that Mm -hmm. this is the first time maybe ever or for for sure, probably the first time in a long time. Yeah. And, and that was kind of wild. Yeah. My, one of my favorite things, um, I mean about our church, but also just like no matter where we are, I think, um, central, um, we can do a lot of big things. (laughs) Like we put on a lot of big events. Um, our Christmas services are coming up. We've got 10 of them. Um, last year, like 10,000 people came. Was that right? Like yeah, it was close yeah, to that. It but it's just like, we, like we literally like we have the LED boards and we do the, you know, just the stuff. We had real camel. Like, I mean, like yeah. we can, <laughs> like we, we do the things and, you know, we're just gifted with um, the means to do that and the creativity of our team to do that and to make this and, and God helps us, you know, have these spectacular, like very grand, also Holy Spirit filled moments. And my favorite thing though, about where we're at is to be able to be in the same room that something so grand happened in. And yet now, um, to truly strip it all back. And all we had was a rug on the stage. We had candles lit the lights were down. We had a pad going and, um, oil on the front of the stage for people who wanted to come and grab that. And all we did was set the expectation, the atmosphere to be of, of faith and of expectancy. Um, and then just said, now we're going to pray. And for that moment and time and that ministry was so grand And I, and, and it's just like, because it it just, it was only God in a space that he was welcomed and allowed to come and that we had just the, the aware that maybe some people are uncomfortable with this. Maybe some people have never been prayed over. Maybe some people don't really understand anointing oil or think maybe we shouldn't do X, Y, and Z. Like, you know, you have all these reasons to maybe not, right? And then to still have the the green light from the Lord to be like, but this is what I'm asking you to do. And so then you're just, all right, this is what we're going to do. And you do it and you step into it. And then that's all you do. And then you let him do all the work and all the work. Um, it had people, I mean, we the, the testimonies you even heard just from coming together to pray um, was wild, just wild. And the encounters people had just wild. I had, I had a woman come up to me. Um, I shared, you know, just, just setting the expectation and and being like, you know, I want, I want you to, I want to share my testimony because I want you to know it is real, you know? And so I shared this encounter that I had with the Lord and when he healed my body and allowed me, I believe truly from that moment on and all that would happen after to be able to, um, have my son Nolan. And, um, I shared about that encounter and what it felt like. I, I, I shared how truly his presence manifested in and on my body and what that whole experience felt like. And I, I, I mean, it's not something I talk a lot about, although it is one of my favorite stories and seasons of my life to share about because of what God did. Um, I felt permission in that moment that that was what I was supposed to share. And um, so I did. And there was a woman who then came up to me afterwards and was like, um, just weeping. And she just said, Brooke, she said, you know how you shared about how your body just got hot and you could just feel, you know, you know, and and just repeating the story that I told. I said, yes. And, and, and she said, um, with tears in her eyes, she said, that's what I just experienced. And I just thought, all because we just allowed God to come into a space where we're praying. 
And yet this woman encountered his presence in a way where, where when he rested on her as people were laying hands and praying for her, she felt his heat from head to toe and never had before. And she's, you know, an older woman. And I just thought it took about five minutes to plan this after he showed it. It took a few hours out of our schedule to facilitate. And that woman had an experience, and many, many had an experience um, that truly marked them by the presence of God and, and, and for the rest of their life. And like that's the kind of God we serve because he really is alive and active. And you just, those are moments where you think, I don't even know how to really talk about it um, because I feel the weight of it and, and, the, and the, the glorious weight of it, the reverent weight of it, you know, of just like, you're just so real and you really, truly just made yourself known to these hungry people that will forever change their life, you know, forever change the way they interact with God, forever change the way that they believe that he, they can experience him or that he does move, you know. Um, when you have a moment where these stories in the Bible that you do believe actually become what you experience, it, it just, it shifts everything. It just does. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like those, those are the kind of things right now we're having to steward and getting to witness and um, being challenged to step into, um, to not only lead, but also facilitate and also receive. Um, it's just really powerful. So I think, I don't even know how long this episode is right now, but I think really um, the word that keeps coming to mind is just like the identity crisis. Um, and we can, we, can, we can leave that as just, you know, identity crisis right now in our culture that we know and recognize and see on the news and um but also the identity crisis like of of and within God's children themselves of 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 just really not knowing their full maybe authority or mm -hmm. um even recognizing the full invitation at hand um because they they there's they, they still haven't learned or experienced that side of the father yet and, 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 and it's just, the Lord is after his children. Um, and as he reveals himself to his children, they get a revelation of him. They then, you know, just crushes the identity crisis that's happening in our culture in a various, in various different ways, yeah. um, in and outside of the church. And I think to summarize just the idea of this in this conversation is is just that. Like the Lord truly is um, after his children. Um, and so that we can gain a true, um, our true identity as just who he made us to be um, because of who he is. Yep. And in real time and in a real authentic way. And and when it's real and authentic in him, it, it changes everything forever. And so I think that's where we're at. We're seeing it happen. I think that's how we can pray. Yeah. I think, you know, not being identified as a Democrat or a Republican, but as a child of God for the things of God in, in this time that God is moving is so important. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, that more than anything else, that that's what we're chasing after and that's what we're in pursuit of and that's what we're contending for. And that's what our lives are yep. um, built around is, is as a Christian and as a disciple, I'm for you, God, and for the things, God, you are for. And in a time where people can I want to identify themselves within certain things and in certain ways to make sense of certain things, it's just like our identity yep. is only found in Christ. And, and, and we are called to operate in that confidence mm -hmm. and in that truth. And when we do that, we will watch the real living God change lives right in front of us um, every time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we got to talk about it. Yeah. Like, I think there's a, there's, because like, we don't share all of this just to be like, oh, here's an update. <laughs> it's going on in our church and us. But like. Because there are, somebody is going to watch this 
and hopefully be encouraged that God is doing things, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, and whether, whether they've seen it with their own eyes, we have. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, just that testimony even. Yeah. And I think it's just like, we have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, uh, there's a different, I think there's a different urgency and there's a different permission Mm -hmm. right now Mm -hmm. that God is giving to, Mm -hmm. to say, like, I'm going to show you, I'm going to let you experience it. I'm going to let you be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And then I need, I want you to share it. Yeah. And, um, and I think we have to, we have to do that because that's, because I think again, like there can, it can get so, you know, it can be so easy to, um, even, you know, especially within the church of like, you know, even at times like words like deeper or things like that, you know, can be such mm-hmm. trigger points mm-hmm. at some point. And mm-hmm. it's God's like, like, I don't like, mm-hmm. it's, I want you to talk about it mm-hmm. and I want you to share it. And when people are ready, then that's up to them. Mm-hmm. But you know, there, it's just, I mean, as you've said, I've, I mean, God's after his people, he's after his children and, um, he's ready and waiting and willing if you're ready and to step into it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that, I think for us, we are just, you know, again, if we talk about the weight of that, it's not Mm -hmm. a bad weight at all. Mm -hmm. It's a very reverent and holy and glorious weight. But then there's also the weight of like, we're not sure how, but we have to try to articulate it Mm -hmm. and open the conversation and begin the conversation. Um, and, and maybe that would be a, a great way for you to jump into this conversation of like, how are, how are you seeing God work in, you know, through your eyes in your sphere of people in the world and yeah, wherever even your home, yeah, church, your yeah. home church and wherever, because um, it just feels like, like in a, it, it's such a world and like specifically, I think the United States, we're such a body of people that deep down, I think sometimes we we pretend to like division and divisiveness, but the reality is, I think we're a people that want to unite behind something. Mm-hmm. Like like we want to be united behind something, and I think God is doing His very best to be like, here I am, mm-hmm. like like I I am the one, and that that can be the uniting piece of all of this. And so I think, you know, like what better way to help unite is mm-hmm. to just share these stories of yeah. what God is doing. And so I know I, I know we would for sure love to read uh, and hear from you on, um, you know, what God's doing yeah. in your life, what he's doing in your church, what he's doing in your community, um, what you've seen him do in friends and just whatever it is, your family. Um, because I think that's just where we're at right now is mm-hmm. that we're in a spot where um, we seem to be talking about what God is doing because he is doing so many huge things, so many big things um, and so many small things too, mm-hmm. um, but will have a big impact. And so, um, you know, whether you share them with us, share them with somebody at lunch or at, around your dinner table, whatever it is, um, I would just encourage you. We would we would love to hear those, and if you don't send them to us, send them to somebody mm-hmm. and hear from them. But you can uh, email us Eric at thepraisepodcast dot com or Brooke at thepraisepodcast dot com. Uh, we would love so good. Yeah, we would love to um, hear from you. You can also go to the website, which is thepraisepodcast dot com. And on there, there is a section where it's, I think it says, join the conversation. And uh, you can uh, type in your, your message or whatever you want right there. And that's a way that, um, that's basically like sending us an email as well. So if you don't want to do the whole email thing, you can just go to thepraisepodcast.com and um, you can join in the conversation that way. Of course, as Brooke mentioned earlier, following us on Instagram, at uh, thepraisepodcast mm-hmm. is uh, a great way to stay up to date with uh, if you need song spotlight reminders. Brooke just posted a really cool post I think yesterday on kind of our our last three episodes worth of mm-hmm. song spotlights. And uh, of course, we have all of those song spotlights on a 
ginormous Spotify playlist <laughs> um, that you can find through the website or on Spotify. Yeah. And uh, if you're curious or you just randomly need like 28 hours worth of music to listen to, <laughs> we've got you covered yeah. on that. Yeah. And also, so kind of going back with one of the um, recommendations for what to share, why to share, whatever, yeah. I want to say you're bringing up the website. When you're on the website, you'll see some of our podcast recommendations. Yeah. One of our podcast recommendations is with the Perrys, and that's Jackie and Preston um, Perry. Well, Jackie Hill Perry. You yeah. got to say that. Yeah. JHP. JHP. Um, and her husband. But they had, and it's uh, they're great teachers. They provide a lot of cool perspective. Um, they challenge you. They stretch you. It's very, very cool um, to engage in those conversations. But they um, had an episode on their podcast um, on October 28th, and it said how to be a Christian during election season. And um, that is an episode that I think is really great to um, listen to. It's, it, it's, again, about Christians in the election season, and again, that identity, talking about things that we need to talk about, and um, that's like helpful and encouraging and challenging all at the same time, and so that is one of our recommendations, and that's why we recommend it, and yeah. so um, I feel like that's fitting for the conversation we had today, um, so yeah, just check it out. Yeah, so we appreciate you joining, mm-hmm. watching, yeah, listening. Again, if you're listening to this podcast, and you have yet to figure out that you could watch this podcast, uh, you can do that now. So uh, if you've been a listener of the podcast for a long time and would like to switch over to being a watcher and listener, <laughs> uh, you can do that. They might say a viewer. A viewer. Is that, <laughs> ah, yes, that sounds like a, a good encompassing word there of we both go. of those things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can do that by uh, finding us on YouTube. Uh, or you can stay listening. Or maybe you've watched and you're like, I can't take that <laughs> I don't want to watch them anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I can't take that anymore. Then you can always still just find the uh, audio uh, version of this on all your major uh, podcast platforms. So, yeah, um, yeah hopefully we'll be um, working on. We got, so, we got some good recommendations of things for, for Instagram that we'll, we'll add to the list and, and try to, um, you know, try to do. I know some people were asking about some behind the scenes stuff on, um, how we, how we do some things. And so, um, one of these days we'll, 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 we'll get there Maybe. and we'll do it. Yeah. We can't even make Instagram reels yet. So I feel like those shots fired <laughs> on that shots note, fired. on that note, <laughs> thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us, spending however much time we just spent together. It really is, uh, uh, an honor and a joy and uh, we we don't take for granted uh, the fact that you all um, spend this time with us and mm-hmm. join in mm-hmm. and uh, have built this community and so really mm-hmm. we want to say we love you and we thank you for that and so just as we always say let's be people every day in every way that bring the praise we'll see you next time